Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about uh, uh, lots of nice things today. So um, we have, uh, first of all, the, the quiz tomorrow is in person. You can't do it from home. Remember that. So if you do it from home, I'll, I'll, I'll flag all the things that are not from within the, the lab's IP number. That's considered plagiarism. Please don't do it. And I know you're here. You're not going to do it. I'm just recording it so people don't have an excuse on it. If on some extraordinary circumstance you can't come to school, you let me know, and I'll try to accommodate it for you so you can do it from home. And I'm going to open up a big blue button, ask you to open up the, uh, your webcam for me so I have your page, and yada, yada, yada. So we'll do it like that. Uh, another thing is that um, the big blue button, uh, uh, I don't know if I created the link for you already or not, but I will. Um, hello. <laughs> Mohsen, how are you? <laughs> All right, so there we go. So I don't get a fist, you just, no, oh, it's okay. <laughs> so, 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 so from now on, everybody comes there, you got a fist bump. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I don't know if I created a link on the on Big Blue on uh, my Seneca uh, emergency session because today it happened. A couple of students who were in Brampton they said that uh, uh, they couldn't make it because the bus were delayed and yada yada yada. So we went and if I get sick, then I'm gonna take the class online. Okay, and uh, if you don't know what Big Blue button is. Um, Google it, go to a demo session, check it out, and see what it is. It's very simple and straightforward, yes. Um, so a lot of people kind of worry about, is this called being deleted? Like, equals to delete. Okay, so uh, anything that you don't want to happen, you say equal to delete. Delete, right? That's it. <laughs> No, the other ways that you can do is to put it in a private section. Okay, gotcha. So you create a, so old, old ways when they, when they wanted something not to happen, where they wanted to prevent it, they put it in a private section of the class and create an empty method in it. So you create a copy constructor in, an, in, a, in a private section and nothing in implementation, okay? Then, uh, after that, they, they said, oh, let's actually create something for it. So anything you don't want to happen, you write equal to delete in front of it, which means, uh, and if you attempt to do it, the compiler is going to say you are trying to invoke a deleted, a deleted method. That's all. All right. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. So it prevents you of doing stuff that you thought it's just a regular function, but regular thing to do, but you're actually invoking something hidden. When you see it prevents you, when you set a copy constructor to delete, and because of that it prevents you to do something, that's the purpose of it. So what I meant? So show, you have to show me the code. Get online with me, show me the code. I'll tell you what you're doing that is invoking, for example, the copy assignment that you are not aware of it. So whenever, uh, that's a good point actually. The reason you set it to delete is that if you unintentionally are doing it, the compiler will not let you. So you're essentially not shooting yourself in the foot by a mistake. If you show me the code, I'm going to tell you, ah, so you are doing this, and that is invoking that without you knowing it. OK? There are, so so there, are, there are several scenarios, especially in constructors, and I hope that you went through it at the beginning of the semester. For example, let's say I have a class, and that class has uh, an a, a constructor that accepts an integer. Let's say I have a class called grade. And grade has a constructor. Everybody picture this, please. The class grade has a constructor that accepts an integer. OK? Then I create an instance of grade. 
grade G. And I set it to something. Then a few lines later, I say G is set to 32. And no assignment operator is overloaded. What's going to happen? First, a constructor will be called. That 32 will be converted to a grade. The compiler says, you are trying to set a grade to an integer. I can't. Let me see if I can convert 32 to, an int to a grade. Can I? Yes, because I have a constructor that builds a grade out of, a, out of an integer. So it builds a grade for you at right side, a temporary nameless grade out of 32. Now you have a grade equal to grade. Now the copy assignment is called without you knowing it. So by one little thing, you invoke so many things that you don't know. So actually, it's a good question. Let me, let me show you the code. So what I was saying was, again, just to, to visualize it better, if I have a class over here called, say, call it mark, OK? And I have integer value for the mark in here. Then in here, I have uh, mark uh, integer value. And in here, I have m value value, right? Are we OK with this? Very simple thing. And now in here, I have uh, mark reference uh, operator equal uh, const mark reference m. And in here, I'm going to say C out operator assignment. Just printing it, right? And in here, I'm going to say, or better to say C log because I'm actually printing some messages. You know, we have four objects that are, that are uh, uh, automatically created global objects. C in, C out, C log, C error. Right? Um, you can use C, C log is exactly like C out, but it's a different object. So if one fails, the other one still works. OK? So in here, I'm going to say uh, constructing, construct uh, out of, out of value. OK? So that's what I'm doing in here. Now, now, in here, if I do something like this, mark, mark, m10, let's put a default value over here, an n, for example, OK? And then in here, I'm going to say n is equal to m. If I do, oh, n is equal to uh, 80. All right? It seems like a harmless thing to do. But when you actually run this program, I get build errors on one. Oh, did I? What did I do? Must re oh, shoot, sorry. Return this. <laughs> so what happens behind the scene is this. <clears throat> so it, it comes in here. Why didn't it print? What happened? Oh, there you go. OK. Now, uh, M and N are constructed, right? Now in here, what happens? It constructs out of 80 because it wants to make these two things match. Now I have a nameless mark at right and a regular mark at left. The next one that is called is actually the assignment operator. And then it comes up because it tries to make things work. That's why if I delete this, this is going to fail. It's going to tell you, hey, you can't do this. 
that's one of the examples for it. So again, deleting stuff is cool because if you do it, then you prevent things. So if I did not want the, assign the copy assignment to happen, and I set this one to delete, If I do that, then this will cause an error. And everybody looks at it and says, what the heck? I'm not doing that. But you are doing it without knowing. Got it? All right. Any good questions like that again? <laughs> that was actually a very good question. Thank you. Anyone? then you create an assignment operator that accepts an integer that specifically handles that. You prevent an extra object creation for no reason, and you handle the situation. So instead of things happening, this is an expensive thing to do. If, I, if this wasn't deleted, this is an expensive thing to do because a temporary nameless entire object is getting created out of this AD. Now, this is a small object. Assume there was like millions of stuff in there. It will create that temporary thing just because you have an assignment. Instead of that, you should have had mark reference operator equal accepting an integer and handle the situation. So that specific function is called for. It's handled. Something that receives a pointer to that thing. You, so yeah, exactly. So when you, when, you want, when you prevent stuff that you don't want to happen, you have to take care of everything that caused that thing to happen. All right? Does that make sense? If we are good? Are we all okay with this, people? All right. So let's talk about animals. <laughs> So set a startup project. Uh, so, do you remember what an abstraction meant when I said something abstract? Something is abstract. What does it mean? Abs oh, what is an what is an abstract art? Have you like not object oriented? Do you know? Oh, I love that. I'll give you. 2% for final test because of that tunnel vision thingy that you told me. That's, that's amazing. Oh, why I never ever use that? That's exactly what abstraction is, to have tunnel vision on something. Who doesn't know what is the meaning of tunnel vision? You know, there's actually a, a, a disorder called tunnel vision. So which means when you're looking at something, you don't see anything. It's as if you're looking through straws. We are looking through a hole. Some people have that problem. Like when you look at you, they only see you, nothing else. Everything else is black and hidden, OK? So that's tunnel vision. That's actually um, a, a disorder, OK? So an abstraction means a tunnel vision on, on a problem. And tunnel vision is good, actually, in, in, in computer program because you only pick what you want. I only want to talk to this gentleman. I ignore everything else so I can concentrate on him. If I don't have tunnel vision and I suddenly feel so many people are in class and are listening and talking to me, then that causes, you know people like those stage fright and stuff like that, that's the reason for it. And they say like, uh, picture that you're only talking to one person, so talk to individuals. When doing that, people who have that problem, they can actually focus and talk. But when they see 500 people are listening, they go, <coughs> that's exactly what programming is. So abstraction is that. Now, this animal is my abstraction of an animal. OK? Stupid abstraction, but it's an abstraction. So I'm saying, I'm saying what an animal means to me. OK? I created that class for me. OK? So the class animal over here that is obscured with many chairs and stuff in my way. <sighs> OK? So. The abstraction of an animal for me 
is uh, something that has a name, okay? And I can set its name with my own properties. Others can't set the name. I can set it only. It's my private thing, okay? I can uh, create an animal using, a uh, using its name. And if I don't mention it, it's going to be a nameless animal. And I can see what the name of the animal is if I want to. So any, everybody can actually see what the name of the animal is. An animal can act in certain way. An animal can move in certain way. An animal can make a sound. And the destructor of animal is destroying the animal. Although the destructor is not needed because I don't have a class with outset resource over here. But it's here just for example purposes. And these two things that I have over here, copy construct and a copy assignment, is there for you to uncomment and walk through and see how things happen if you want to. They are not related to what I want to teach. But of course, I leave it over there so you can uncomment, play with it, and learn. That's how we learn, right? You clone, you copy my code, and you play with it. That's how you learn. Um, several students, several, so not one or two, came to me right halfway through the semester, how do we study? Like, how can I study to, the, to how can I, what is, what is the way of, proper way of studying computer programming so I can be successful? That's how it is. When I push a code, you pull, you copy it in your uh, workshop repository, in your sandbox, you fiddle with it, you break it, you fix it. That's how you learn. Okay, you open it up, you do something that doesn't work anymore, you try to fix it, you try to add features, play with it and see how things work. You do that, believe me, you're going to get A++ in this subject. That's the only way. All right? Not only one plus, two pluses. <laughs> That's B, isn't it? <laughs> All right. <coughs> actually, actually, that's not. It's D. Because you add one to the ASCII code, so it becomes D. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> another bug in the language. It actually gets worse after it's done. So, 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 so yeah. So it acts some way, it moves some way, and makes a sound. And and um, I, the implementation for it is quite simple and straightforward. Uh, I have the animal thingy over here. I have the constructor, and in the constructor, I'm printing a message, which I'm not supposed to. Many of you do. Uh, but those are debugging purposes. Yes, sir. Oh, um, uh, no, wait. Deep breath. Baby steps. That's at the end of the session. <laughs> okay. So, so that's so so. Yeah. So that's that. And as you see, I am returning the animal's name in a very secure way. It's a constant pointer, and the name cannot change my my animal, so it's a beautiful thing I have over here. I can set the name properly with my string copy that is in my utility class. I have a utility class that holds all my functions, all the things that I have. I don't want to use all the unsafe stuff that we have from C, so I write stuff my own. I'll show it to you. Uh, an animal can act, so it's going to say the animal with the name acts like an animal, moves like an animal, and sounds like an animal. Okay? And at the end, I'm going to say removing yada yada the animal, whatever the animal is. Are we okay with this? This is pretty good and straightforward. So we run it. It's going to run, and everything's going to work properly. So I run it. It's going to actually show me the message. Oh, builders. Oh, yes, builders. So let me just, okay, people don't look. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> okay. All right, one more time. All right. Okay, one more time. So there you go. So so it's actually so if I go to main over here, it's gonna say. Uh, so I create an animal called Buffy. I don't know why I called it Buffy, but Buffy it is. So I have an animal called Buffy, and uh, Buffy acts like animal. Buffy moves like animal. Buffy sounds like animal, and we're moving ba uh, Buffy the animal. Are we okay with this? All right. I used to have killing over there. One of the students actually objected. Oh, that's too cruel. I'm just removing it. <laughs> no killing in this class. All right. Are we okay down to this point? Are we good? All right. So, <clears throat> but these messages created, like acting stuff are fine, but creating stuff is some, there's something that I want to remove if I want to. So I want to put those things in some kind of a flag so I can remove, activate and deactivate it. So what I will do in this animal thingy of mine, I'm going to create a debug thing. So I'm going to say 
bool debug, and I'm going to debug, and I'm going to set that thing to false by, by default. And in here, I'm going to say if debug, show the C out thingy, right? Uh, that should be actually C log, but hey. If debug, right? And I can do that. Are we okay with this? Problem is that I want to be able to turn this on and off from main. So wherever I'm testing, I want to activate and deactivate. I don't want to come back to, to animal thingy. Animal thingy has a debugging by default is false. I want to turn it on if I want to. So, <clears throat> and that brings us to the thing, to, to this part. The pool debug equals to false. What is the, what, do you remember about the, like, the, we had like a few scopes, different types of scopes for variable. Global, she's right but wrong. So what is, the, I'll tell you why I said you're right. Global, yeah, global to the animal, which means it is not global. What type of scope does it have? No, block scope, if I, if I had an if statement inside name, and in the first part of the if statement I created the debug, it would be a block scope. A block scope is, a block scope is a scope that exists within function scope, okay? The next thing, if I had it in here, that would call function scope because it's inside the function and it dies when the function is gone. The next one is no. Yeah, you could call it local, but I don't think, I, I don't know. Do we have a local scope, people? Do we have such a thing as local? No, I don't think there is local. It's called file scope. So this thing has a file scope. So it's only visible within file, which you said animal, because our modules in C++ are based on the, the classes that we have. Each file contains a, an animal, so you said within animal. So it's global. It's any, if I wanted, to, but the correct thing is that any attribute of animal is global within animal, not this one. This is global within file, which means I can have many other functions over here that has nothing to do with animal that it would still have access to debug. Are we fine? So this is fine. So a file scope is what we called by mistake in C language global. It's a common mistake. It's not global. This is not yours. It's mine, right? Okay. Yeah. So. So. Yeah, so this is file scope. We can, we can convert anything that has file scope into global. Remember in C language when I had a function and I wrote it in a module and I wanted to use that function in other files. If I want to use a function outside of the file, what do I do, my friend? Okay, <laughs> we've got to go back. So. If I have a function, I create a function in a file, and I want to use that function in other files in my project, what do I do so that function becomes available in other files? No, it's ba back to, see, this is not C++ in IPC 144. In IPC 144, you had a function in one file, you wanted to use it in another file. What do you add to that function? What do you add so it becomes available? Seriously? Include what? So what do you have in that header file? So it becomes accessible. Thank you! You create a prototype. So think, don't say pass. <laughs> okay? So you just create a prototype for a function. You create a prototype for a function, that function becomes available everywhere else. Right? Right? Right. So what do we do? We add the signature of the function anywhere and they can use it. Why? Because the compiler says, hey, trust me, it's there, but it's somewhere else, and it's fine, it's through a linker, yada, yada, you know how the compiler works, works hopefully. How, so that's how it's going to happen. We can actually add a prototype for, for variables to make them global. How do we do that? We take the signature of the variable. When I say variable, I mean any instance of an object. That could be an employee, okay? So I, I take the signature of the function of the variable, I go to the header file of that module, and right over there, I will put the variable's signature only, no initialization or anything. Then in here I say extern. That makes the debug visible to all files who include animal.h. 
Are we okay with this? Now I can actually go, now if I actually run this program, the debugging messages for the thing is not going to show, but I can go in main, because it's in the SDDS and I added the SDDS namespace, I can actually say over here debug is equal to true, and it knows it's that debug because the extern is there. If I didn't have that one, it couldn't have accessed it. Now it actually sets the debugging to true, and I'll see the messages for the, for the animal thing. Are we good with this? Are we okay, one? Beautiful. Are we okay, two? Yeah, because I'm creating it. I can actually but use it. No, that's it. The external. This, <laughs> that's you. You're not. You're not. You're not looking at what the devil is this extern then? Extern says this is not the variable. This is the prototype. Extern tells the compiler this is not the variable. This is something that exists in another file. Extern makes this a prototype. If you didn't have it an extern, you were in trouble. In each one, you would have a separate variable. But when you put the extern, it says, this is not the variable, but this one exists somewhere. Now, it would compile perfectly if I actually remove that Boolean extern from uh, animal.cpp, but it wouldn't have linked exactly like a function. You can write a function, call a function with its prototype only. It compiles perfectly. But when you want to link it, it says, hey, you promised there is a function, but I can't find it. Same thing with this. When you are saying Boolean debug is an external variable, it says, I'll trust you, I'll compile. But when it links, it tries to find to see where is that external thing. It can't find it, it gives you an error. Yes, exactly. All right. And I did the same trick with utils. So my utils over here, as you see in my utils.cpp, because I have all my stuff inside the utils, two lower str, cat str, compare, all these good stuff in here, I have lots of function in my utils, right? I want to make them accessible, so what I did in utils.cpp, I created an instance of utils and I called it ut. So ut is an instance of the utils. I want to make it global. I'll go to utils.h and extern it. So now, any place includes ut has access to that ut thingy. And what I can do over, um, no, I'm not going to, that's 3, 4, 5. I'm not going to go there. <clears throat> so I could, make, I could delete the constructor in here. Who asked the question? I could delete the constructor over here and magically somehow create that thing, and I can't tell you now it's 345, so nobody could instantiate UT. UT would have only one instance, like C out, like C error, like C log. C log is exactly the same thing. They instantiated it in IO stream, but if you want to instantiate it yourself, you won't, it won't allow you. You can't even pass it by value. Copy constructor is deleted. Constructor is deleted. Everything is deleted though with it. Actually, constructor is private, not deleted which means it can get constructed, but yeah. Are we okay with this? Are we good? Good? All right. So now that the tools that I have are ready, let's talk about the animal. So we know how the animal works. Any questions about the beautiful animal in here? No? No questions? All right. So I have an animal. But now I want to have a cat. Cats are animals, right? So I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to go back and create all the things that I have. I know because cat is an animal, it can move, it can act, and it can make a sound, right? So I want to create. But a cat has something that an animal doesn't have. You know what is that? Mm -hmm. A cat has nine lives. An animal doesn't have. So it needs an attribute to know how many lives it has. Maybe it was killed three times, so it's, it's now like six times, right? So we need to know how many lives it has. So how do I create a cat out of 
an animal, so I don't have to create all the names, name, and all the stuff. Inheritance, that's how I do it. So what I do in here is, nobody looks at the screen of this gentleman. <laughs> Let me just see if I have it in here. <laughs> and the funny thing is that it is actually <laughs> Yes. Yes. When do you use inheritance instead of like friend You say friend, I'm gonna kill you. I don't use it. Uh, <laughs> because the friends, you have a friend? I know what you told me. Do you have a friend? Yes. Is he you? So is a, remember, is a relationship. Is a, if you can put is a, if you can put your inheritance in an is a relationship, if you can say BMW is a car, that's inheritance. Okay, but if I say driver has unlimited access to a file, to a, to a car, that's friendship. Driver is not a car. Driver is just an entity that has full access to a car. No, not at all. Does it, do you have wheels? Do you have a horn? And you're beep, beep. You're not a car. Trust me. Okay, so it doesn't do the same thing. It's it's completely different thing. Is a relationship, has a relationship becomes an attribute. A car has wheels. A car has an engine. An engine is not a car. A car has an engine. A car has doors. A car has steering wheel. Okay, are we good? Thank you for the question, by the way. It was funny, so it was nice. <laughs> okay, so. So now I want to create a cat. This is, how a, this is how you inherit, okay? You say a cat, semicolon, is a. So the public that you see over here is, is a, is an, in this case, animal. So you're saying class cat is an animal, which means everything that animal has comes in here, everything. Then you'll say, also number of lives. Then you say, I want to default a cat. I want to create a cat with the name and number of lives. A cat can act. A cat does not know how to move. Do I move? Does it matter? No, because an animal can move, which means the cat knows how to move. Its move is just not specific. It moves like just any other animal. And a cat can make a sound. And cat has an extra thing called play that animal doesn't have. So when you have, and if you take a look at the, the, the signature of cats, if you look at the signature of cats act, it is identical to the animal's act. You see that? Void act, void act. So there is no overloading happening here. What is it called is overriding. It overwrites or it shadows. So remember, shadows. If somebody tells you what does the method act of animal of cat do to the uh, act of animal, it shadows it. Which means when you create an animal and you say act, it will not go to the basis act. It acts like an animal. But if you say animal move, I don't have a move. I go back and move like my base class, the design that I have. We said fist bumps. Anybody can say late. Go ahead, please. <laughs> All right. Are we good? Are we good? Are we okay, one? So when we called the, when we the cat, yeah, always called cat's act. Exactly. When we called from the animal, always called the animal object. Act. Of course, yeah. Uh, there is another rule. Anything that is closer, that's going to get called. Whatever is closer, that's called. So if you're in an animal, which act is closer? Animals, that's going to be it. If you're in a cat, which act is closer? Act. Unless 
you specifically in, in the cat say, I want the animals and animals only. I'll show you how. Which one? So I don't need a declaration for act and a sound, you say? Okay. I need it if I want it changed. Or I want it modified. You can have two things. You can have it modified or completely changed. So, in this example of mine, the act is completely changed, but sound is modified, and play is completely new. I'll show the coding so you can see. But your point is perfectly good. Why do we do inheritance? Because we had something that doesn't satisfy our needs anymore. Therefore, I reuse. So, in structured programming, in C programming, how do you reuse your code? You create functions. In object-oriented programming, how you reuse your code? You use inheritance. In it, because reusing functions is like old news. That's come, come on. Now you reuse your design. So you use the entire existence of some object. Are we okay with this? All right. How does it happen? So <clears throat> let's look at the cat's implementation. All those comment thingies are for you to uncomment and play with this, okay? First of all, construct. did I talk about this area and I told you what it's called? The area between the constructor and the body of the constructor. Did I mention that? No? Okay. Uh, this is what, how I refer to it. It's not in any book, any textbook. They don't refer to it as I do it. It just it makes sense to me. That's why I called it that. I call that place initialization area. So in a constructor, the space between the parentheses, close parentheses of the prototype and the body of the constructor, that space, the one that if you delete, it doesn't make the, it, it, it keeps the syntax intact. Oh, this, this is a cat, right? And now in here, I can initialize parts of the cat. How do I do that? I can say, I want the animal, because a cat is built up of an animal. Please pay attention to me on this case. When you do inheritance, the cat, when you're creating a cat out of an animal, you don't have two objects. Remember that. You have one object that has two parts. OK? That is extremely important for you to realize. You have one object that has two parts. Please appreciate that fact. So in here I can say, when I create a cat, I want the animal part of the cat to be called Garfield. Or let's call it, it's Tom and Jerry, right? Tom. Tom is the cat, right? Jerry is the mouse, right? OK. Tom. So I'm saying, if you don't mention it, it's Tom. Ah, let's go back with. Uh, People who are as old as me, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to change it. I'm going to go with Garfield. OK, let me put it in one line so you see when I say initialization, you know what do I mean? And I can initialize any properties of the cat in there, like number of lives. I'm setting it to 9. OK, if you look at the cat's uh, header file in here, <clears throat> I could have set the number of lives over here to 9, right? Now, <clears throat> remember, this initialization happens first. This one happens second. What you have inside the constructor happens third. Got it? First this, second that, third this one. So if I had over here 6, that would overwrite the 9 over there. But I didn't do it, I just wanted to. So I'm going to say a cat just when it gets created, it's in a safe empty state. Number of lives is 0. But if you just default a cat, the number of, so that's true. So first it becomes 0, then it becomes 9, and then continues with whatever you have in here. Yes? Is it for initialization? Yes. Yes. 
So you're invoking stuff to initialize. You cannot call a function over there. You can't do that. But can't you? I think you can. What about? Well, let's not, let's, let's put it this. It is initialization only. Let me answer it like that. I don't want to trick you guys. C is a very cryptic language. You can do many things in just one statement. So if I say it's for initialization only, so let's say, put it this way. I'm going to rephrase what you say. It's for initialization purposes only. And while you initialize something, you can do many things. I can, like, for example, number of lives is none, nine. In here, I can call a function that receives an integer from user. So that fun and that function returns an integer. So can I call a function? Yes, you can. But it has to initialize something in here. Otherwise, got it? OK. Yes. No, anything. That's what I'm saying. If you don't, if you, if you don't put it, what's going to get called? No, no. When cat, the cat is built up of an animal, right? Yeah. When you don't mention how the animal is, is built, what should happen? What does the compiler do? Default. So if you don't mention anything, an animal doesn't have default constructor, you're going to have a compilation error. So, but you can call invoke any constructor. As a matter of fact, you can invoke other constructors of the same class, but that's new. That's not a, that's, that, you couldn't do it a few versions before. But for now, let's just stick to the parts of the class. So in here, I'm saying if I don't mention it, animal is Garfield and a knife live is nine. Okay, and I have my debugging stuff over there. And I can do the exact same thing with the regular. So with the regular one, as you see, I chose actually to use the universal way of initialization. So uh, at the end of the class, uh, can you see this or it's too, too small? End of the class, can you see this? Is it visible, readable? OK. So, so as you see in the initialization area, I'm using the universal way. So I'm going to say, OK, whatever name you get passes to the animal. And whatever number of lives you sit, you see you pass it to number of lives. So number of lives and the animal part will get initialized using the arguments of the two argument constructor of the cat. Are we OK with this? Yes. Uh, repeat that again, please. Why do I? Oh, because that's initialization. Oh, my goodness. The answer is this, and you have to answer it. You ask the question, you have to answer it. So, so uh, please answer. What is the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. uh, huh? What is the difference between setting the values of i and j to 5? I'm not initializing anything to I. I have garbage inside. I is defaulted over there. And default is garbage in this case, right? So first I default it, then I call the assignment operator, correct? What am I doing here? No. In here, assignment at the moment of creation is a call to the constructor. Therefore, J will have the value 5 right from the beginning. At no time it's going to have garbage in it. This is called initialization. This is called setting. Here I'm initializing it. Here I'm setting it. Are we OK with this? For this line, I gets created. Then I exists at 17 and is set to 5. In here, J does not exist without a 5 in it. J will get created with 5 in it. Do we understand this? OK, now let's go back to here. What happens if I do this?
What do you think is going to happen here now? So I'm creating a cat. The name of the cat is passed over here, what I want to name the cat, and number of lives. Number of lives, we know it's being initialized to the number of lives that is coming in. But does the animal site will be set to name here now? No, because this has nothing to do with the cat. It's going to create a temporary nameless animal at line 37, set it to the name, and it will die at the end of line 37. It has nothing to do with the cat. Because when the constructor is running, initialization is over. Now the cat exists. Now you want to set it. But here is the initialization area. That's the only chance you have to initialize. You pass that. As soon as the constructor starts running, the cat exists now. You are setting it in stuff. So <clears throat> the number of lives, if it was an object, let's say cat had a, what can it have? Head, whatever. <laughs> OK? If you bring it down, then that object must have a default constructor because it has to get constructor and then set. If you want the object, the attributes of the cat to get initialized, you have to either put it here or put it here. Inside the constructor, when the constructor starts, cat exists, everything is in place. OK? All right. Yes, you can. But, but what would happen? Yes, you can. But because it's just a, because it, this is just a, a primitive type, you don't care. First of all, animal, you don't have an animal. Animal is part of cat. It is the cat itself. But in here, if I had an object of any kind, I'll, I'll give you an example after I finish this, because it, it, this is going back to uh, week six material. This is inheritance I want to teach. So as soon as I'm finished with inheritance, I'll tackle that one, OK, about initializing an object, OK? But uh, thank you for the question, actually. So quite frankly, we always prefer initialization rather than setting. Setting is more expensive. Initialization is just creates the thing, is creating the thing right at the beginning. Setting first creates it, then sets it. So you don't want to do that. <clears throat> so why is this animal not green? I don't know. Anyway, so, so that's that. Now take a look at act. Act is completely new. So it says act, act playful, yada, yada, the cat. It has nothing to do with the action of the animal. Move is not even implemented, so the, app, the move of the animal is going to get called. But sound, I'm going to say first say meow, then make the sound that animal makes. So this changes the act. This doesn't implement it. This modifies it, which means it actually uses the sound of the base class. How do you access the functions of the base class? You use the base class's name with scope resolution. Because this function is not an instance anywhere, it belongs to myself. I just want to go to the scope of animal of mine. And it brings the sound out. So you can manually call the base class's functions by having base scope resolution over them. And play is completely something new. Are we good with this? So I run the program, and it's going to work perfectly with absolutely no problem. And by the way, another thing that I wanted to add over here, if you see over here the animal, the one that I tried to hide, in, and you looked at the, in a sneaky way, you looked at the, uh, the, the animal anyway, was that uh, let's assume that I don't want people to directly, outsiders, to directly access the name of an animal. Because you can never ask what an animal, what is your name, right? You have to look at their name tag, right? No animal can say what their names are. So that should be a private thing. But the private, if I put this one in private area, say, OK, animal cannot tell you what is its name. 
If I try to compile and run it, I'm going to face problems over here. Problem is that it's going to say, <clears throat> it's going to say, hey, you are trying to, in the child, you are trying to access private properties of the base. A bad analogy, analogy for this is, uh, let's say, father or mother and, and the son or daughter. So if I say I am son of my father and I inherit everything from my father, then I would say my father has this Porsche 911. He doesn't let anybody drive. He has it. It's private to him. Oh, he has this Ford Festiva, 15-year-old called that barely moves. That lends him to his children. Okay, so that car children can use, but the 911 one they can't use, right? It's private. How can I do that? In this case, I put the name in in private part. Cat cannot use it, but cat should use it. Cat is not supposed to directly access the name. It's not supposed to be able to set the name manually, but it needs to be able to see what the name is so it can play its messages. You can make stuff to only be used by children to put it in a new access modifier that is called protected. So you can actually say over here, instead of, instead of private, you can say over here protected. When you say protected, it means children can, out, can access it, but outsider cannot. Are we good? And therefore, the the name over here, which is essentially animal's name, not double L, animal's name. I don't need to mention it, though, because I didn't shadow it. I didn't overwrite it. Because I didn't overwrite it, I don't need to mention it. I can just write name. And it will call the animal's name with no problem because it's protected. Are we OK? So now if I have run the program now, three years later, Um, the cat gets, oh, let me just uh, stop this one. So the cat gets created, and it creates Fluffy the animal, and as a cat with five lives, was killed four times before. Are we okay with this? All right. And then it defaults the cat G, and it becomes Garfield, that is defaulted cat with nine lives. Are we okay with this? Are we good? All right. Now, if I say g dot act, the act like of the anim of the cat is called, and completely shadows the animal's act. The same thing as c. So Garfield and Fluffy, they both act like cats. They forget how the animal acts. But if I tell them to move because they didn't implement move, they're just gonna move like animals. Okay. But when they are making a sound, it's a combination of what they do and what an animal does, which is a meow, and Fluffy sounds like animal, and Fluffy the cat is, oh, playing thingy is a completely separate thing. Sorry, I did twice by mistake. So this sound thingy not only says meow, but uses the animal's uh, feature too. And that's how you modify things. Obviously, when you do something new, to add something new to an to a, uh, inherited class, then everything is good and beautiful. Are we OK down to this point? So inheritance looks like everything's in order, and everything works fine and nice and dandy. But there is one problem with inheritance that we have to overcome. And the, that, that is the fact that uh, uh, in an object, in, in real life, you tell, you come to class, say, Mr. Soliman Lu, start teaching, please. I'm going to start teaching C++, right? In an object-oriented world, that's not the case. When you use my father's reference to call me, you don't call me far that. My father actually was a teacher. He used to teach mechanics. Okay. So in an object-oriented world, if you told me Mr. Soliman to teach, I would have taught you mechanics. If you told me far that teach, I would have called to, uh, teach you C++. If you used my reference or pointer, I would give you the, remember I told you, uh, who, who said that, uh, which one is getting called? I said the closer one. Somebody said, I don't know who was it. It was you? Somebody said, which one is called? I said, always the closer. Yeah. 
oh, the closer one. So if you refer to a, a cat as an animal, you can, right? Because cat is an animal. If you refer to a cat as an animal, how do you do that? Have a reference of animal to a cat or have a pointer of type animal to a cat? You can because cat is an animal. If you refer to a cat as an animal, it will forget that it was a cat. It will act like an animal. Like me, if you tell me, Mr. Soliman, who teach, I'm going to start teaching you mechanics over here. I have no idea what it is. Okay? But if you say, far that teach, then you're using my own reference, and therefore I'm going to teach C++. You follow? Yes. Are you a human being? No, you're not. You're a male person thingy. Sorry, I mean, not like human See, you, that you can always refer to an object of its base class. Are you a mammal? Yes. Are you a human being? Yes. And you are a human being from, what is your uh, background? Chinese. So you are a Chinese human being. When it comes to me, I'm a Persian human being, okay? But my child is a Canadian human being, right? So we are all human beings, but she's a mammal, and she used to be a Neanderthal before that. So we, we go through all these things, and, and so these hierarchies have, we can refer to an object with the type of its uh, ancestors, correct? If I tell you you're Chinese, I'm not lying. If I'm telling you you're a human, I'm not lying. It's the same thing. What is the syntax of that in C++? I'll show you. Okay, so how do we call a derived class using its parent's reference? Oh, I did. I made a mistake. I called something wrong. Set as startup project. All right. So this is the same thing. Implementation is not changed. I have the animal over here, and life is beautiful, and everything is. And I have the cat, right? But look at my main. The first line, I have cat P that is called Pepper. P is a cat. Pepper is a cat. If I use P, I'm using a cat's reference, right? In second one, I have an animal pointer, but a new instance of cat is created in it. Can I? Yes, because cat is an animal. Therefore, a pointer of animal can point to a cat. There is no problem with it. And then that cat pepper that I have, I can create an animal reference that refers to the to the cat that's name is P, is as you're calling me Mr. Soliman Lu. Right? It's the same thing. But if you have an animal, there's, animal, there's, no, there's nothing over here we don't care about. Let me just turn it off. <laughs> Let me just remove it. We don't need it. Do we have one using it? No. Are we okay with this? There is a problem with it, too. Again, it completely forgets what it was. Look at this. When I run the program, so you see that there's no, there's no syntax error, nothing, everything's perfectly good over here. So <clears throat> initially, hmm. seriously, where is the mouse? There is the mouse, there you go. So cat is created, another cat is created, so they are both cats. No animal is created over here, right? This is okay. I have an animal reference that is pointing to a cat that is, has its own cat reference, right? And here I'm in trouble. This cat is created that I have no way of accessing the cat parts because I only have an animal reference to it, animal pointer to it. You follow? Now, so that's first problem. The first problem is that if you dynamically allocate a derived class into a pointer of the base, Essentially, it's useless because it becomes the base, as if the other one doesn't exist. Are we good? So now, now let's see what happens in here. 
So we know that everything is perfectly okay. And by the way, by the way, uh, in here uh, I I implemented everything. So move is implemented too, okay? Because I wanted to demonstrate move is implemented too. Are we good with this? So the other one move that wasn't implemented in here, it is. So when you look at it, when you look at uh, the main over here, everything is cat. When I come, but I, AR I know is reference of P, so it's the same creature. But if I come over here and run it using AR, it forgets that it was a cat. Pepper becomes an animal. Okay? And for the pointer one, it's the same thing. It's an animal. Tom doesn't act like a cat at all. You have no way of, do you have no way of accessing the cat parts because you do not have a cat reference at all. It becomes even worse. When you want to delete cat, the, the, the uh, Tom the cat, when you want to delete it, compiler only sees an animal. There is no cat. Therefore, when it's deleting it, it only removes the animal part of the memory, and the rest becomes leak. So that integer number of lives remains in memory. So you're going to have memory leak. That's awful. So you do something like this. It looks like everything's OK, but if you do it through Valgrind, you'll see that. Uh, so, so as you see, removing Tom the animal, but when you are removing cat, Cat part is not deleted. And if, I, and if I go to the other, and if I finish the function, you will see that Pepper, the cat, and animal is deleted. So the one that was an automatic variable, the one that was an automatic variable, everything got deleted, no memory leak. The one that I did it, I, that word, oh, <clears throat> the word disappeared. There you go. The one that I did it dynamically, I cannot even delete it. What do I do? How do I fix this problem? It is so easy. Because of this fact, C++ added a new way, a new statement that created ultimate type of polymorphism. Let me show you. If I go to this animal, OK? Let's put it like this. <clears throat> Object orientation provided this provided this mechanism that guarantees that the latest version of a method method what is a method who's the next person what is a what is a method when I say method what do I mean inside the class, a member function. OK, so, so when I say method, in all programming languages, everybody knows that you mean actually uh, a member function. OK, M in an object, if you read an object-oriented book that is not language-related, re they call member functions methods. And they call member variables attributes. OK, just remember that. But. <clears throat> Object orientation provides a mechanism, some kind of a routine, that guarantees that the latest version of a method is called, even if a derived class is referred to by its base reference or pointer. This mechanism is called virtuality. So if you make the method of the base class virtual, no matter how it's called, how it's accessed, the compiler looks. Is there a newer version of this? If the answer is yes, it will call it. If no, it will call the original one. So for example, let's say, <clears throat> let's say I have a move in here. Let's say I have a move in here. And in here, in the cat, I don't have a move. Let's say the cat doesn't have a move. I need to get the shortcut for that. I keep forgetting. Does it say, oh, control K, control R, too wrong, forget it. OK, so, so let's say in the cat, I'll remove the move in here, OK? Remove 
the move from the cat. Okay, so, so the cat didn't implement the move, and I come in animal, and I'm going to say act is virtual. See, I'm not doing anything else. I'm going to say move is virtual. Okay, and I say sound is virtual. So remember how... When I accessed Tom or Pepper using the reference or pointer of animal, none of them were updated. Now, remember, move is now not implemented. So although it is virtual, because there is no latest version, the animal is going to get called. So if I rerun this, oh, it's, it's, no, it's ended? Yeah. So if I rerun this now, If I rerun this now for the 50th time, okay, if I rerun this now, now when I come to the act, first of all, these are created fine. <clears throat> when I have a derived class, and a derived class is reference, virtuality doesn't mean beep, it doesn't get activated at all. Virtuality only comes in play when you have a derived class pointed by a base pointer or referred by a base reference. If you don't have that case, you don't even think about virtuality. Okay? So now, in here, so these are working perfectly. Okay? Obviously, it's not going to move like a cat because I removed the move implementation. But sound works and everything works. Now when I come over here, although AR is a reference of an animal, but it will use the latest version because the cat, because, because the animal's act is virtual. Move is virtual too, but there is no latest version, so it still calls the animal. And sound too. And the same thing over here. So all these things work perfectly. And how do I fix the problem with memory leak? You write a virtual in front of the destructor. If you write a virtual in front of the destructor, it guarantees that the latest version of the destructor is called, that is the cat's destructor, correct? Therefore, it destroys the cat and everything in it. And because of that, the animal will go away. So from now, Till the day you die, when you do C++, you have a virtual in front of the destructor. That's the new syntax for structure for destructor from now on. Anytime you create a destructor for any class, stick a virtual in front of it. Because in future, if you make inherit, if you use inheritance to do something with it, you want. And even if you do not have, even if you do not have a class with resource. This is a class that you don't need rule of three. You always create a destructor, an empty one, and you set it to virtual. So classes you create from now on must have a destructor, even if you don't need it, and you must make it virtual. Yes. Question? No. Yes. What is that extern? Oh, that's at the beginning of the class. I'll explain later. Okay, that makes a local uh, a file variable debug global to everywhere. I have a debug variable inside animal, a file scope variable. When I put extern, it becomes global. So any place that includes the, uh, the animal.h can have access to it. Listen to the recording at the beginning of the class. That's the first thing I'm saying. Okay, just, it takes two seconds. First five minutes of the lecture. Yes. So just to make sure I understand. Inherited. No! Only those who you want to get improved. If in my animal, if, let's, let's come back over here. So, so you understand that virtual 
doesn't do anything if there is no newer version. We understand that, right? I'm going to remove that virtual over there and bring the move back. So I'm going to remove that virtual over there and bring the move back. Let's say, because of my business logic, I believe movement of an animal should never get changed. An animal should always move like an animal, no matter how inheritance happens. So you want the move not to get improved, not to get modified. You don't make it virtual. As simple as that. Which means when the cat implements the movement, everything else will be fine. But this one remains the same. So not making it virtual, sometimes you need that. Sometimes you want a class when it's referred to an animal to move like an animal and not a cat. I cannot tell you the circumstances now, but it happens. You will see in future. You create a class, and when you create a class, you say, when, I, when, this cl when the reference or pointer of this class is used, I do not want the child's thing to be called. Anything, I want this to be called only, for whatever reason. If that's the case, you don't make it virtual. So, in an interview, you're in an interview C++, they ask you, what is virtual? This is your answer. Guarantees the latest version of a method is called. And the guarantees the latest version of a method is called. Okay? Guarantees the latest version of a method is called. Number one, the long version. Guarantees the latest version of a method is called in the hierarchy of inheritance. You cannot have a standalone virtual function. It doesn't make sense. Okay? And again, virtuality only comes in play when you have a child being referred to or pointed to as a parent. Only. So I'll, I'm going to put this thing back to what it was before, and I'm going to bring the next project up that actually has everything in here. So I'm taking all the virtuality out. And bring the next one in to show you why. Sure. So if you look at the main over here, see what's happening. Oh. Yeah, so it actually, sh it, it, this, it, that's not the why thingy. But let me just explain. So now, as you see over here, I have an animal that is rat over there. And let me first show you what, what uh, let me show you what the, what the animal is. So as you see, everything is virtual in here. Act, move, sound, everything's virtual. Okay? First, let's have that one. So we know everything is virtual in here. Now, the next thing in here, when I'm in main, as you see, I'm creating, I, I am creating an animal. So when I say creating an animal, and then I'm creating a cat, two cats, one in a cat pointer, the other one in an animal pointer, and a reference of an animal pointer to a cat. A, act. Do I need to think about virtuality? No. There is no inheritance. It's an animal with an animal reference. No inheritance involved. We don't care if anything's virtual or not. You don't even look at it. Second one. P, act. There is no inheritance. I have a cat. And I'm referring to as a cat. Cat is a cat. Everything's going to be called as a cat. I don't need to worry about anything. OK? Of course, if cat didn't have the move, the move of the animal would have been called. But that's regular inheritance. nothing to do with virtuality. So virtuality is not in play. This one. I have a cat pointer pointing as a cat. Again, no virtuality. I don't care. OK? But now, I have an animal reference to a cat. That's when you actually 
see virtuality in play and it actually jumps to the next version and the cat is actually happening. So an animal reference is acting like a cat because it is holding the reference of a cat. And the other one too, it is an animal pointer and there is no reference of a cat to that animal, Fluff, uh, Tom. Tom has no reference of a, of, of a cat, but still it acts like a cat perfectly. And so when the one that is, has C, it's so cat pointer to pointer, it's deleted, no problem. It's going to delete properly because it's a cat pointer holding a cat. But the other one is an animal pointer pointing to a cat, and I'm going to say delete. This one is the one that the virtual for destructor comes active, and now actually the full cat gets deleted, not the animal only. The beautiful thing is that now I can create common functions for all the animals. For example, I will say, if you tickle an animal, it's going to make a sound. So what do I say? I'm going to say tickle, receive a reference, constant reference of an animal, and make a sound, right? So do I need to worry about if it's a cat or it's a, an animal or whatever it is? No. Why? Because the virtuality comes in play. If I actually use the, if I actually call the animal one, it's going to say, sound like the rat, the animal, and says, ha, ha, ha. But when I actually tickle a cat, Although the reference is animal, well, when I say A, that sound, because sound is virtual, the cat is going to say meow, and then the rest is going to happen. This is why you overload the O stream for displaying uh, uh, a class, and then you use a file, and it works perfectly with it. You overload insertion operation for O stream to print on a screen, then you create O F stream, that is a file, that is a child of O stream, and you can use the same insertion operator to insert the object into file, and it goes to the overload of your O stream, and it still prints it perfectly like a file, because file has the same operation as O stream, and it's virtual. Therefore, the latest version will be called, therefore, the file. Got it? Are we good? <clears throat> so that's that. And it brings us to the last thing that I want to talk about today. Most of the time when you are designing a class, many of actions are obvious that they exist but you're not certain how yet. For example, again, going back to human beings, uh, what language do you speak? Cantonese, Mandarin, or anything else? Mandarin? OK. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why in two seconds, OK? <clears throat> so and for me, it's a little complicated. So my mother tongue is Azerbaijani. It's a province in Iran. Okay, you don't need to know it. Just letting you know, to, to give you examples. <clears throat> Do we all agree that human beings can talk? So if you, if, can you create an instance of a human, say, talk? No. What language? You're a Persian, right? What is your mother tongue? There you go. So if I say Mohsen.talk, Farsi comes out. When you say fardat.talk, Azerbaijanian comes out. When you say kevin.talk, Chinese Mandarin is going to come out. Because he's a Mandarin speaking Chinese, I'm an Azerbaijanian speaking Persian, he's a Farsi speaking Persian. You follow what I'm saying? So I know. 100%, I'm 100% sure that there is a method for a human called talk, but I cannot implement it until I inherit it into a human being that is Chinese 
and then inherit that one to a human being that is a Mandarin speaking Chinese. And then that can talk. So I have to go three levels of inheritance to be able to implement the talk. But the damn talk exists. How can I enforce it? How can I enforce a programmer to implement talk for a human being, otherwise they won't be able to instantiate it. And when you think about it, if I told you, if I told you, for example, close your eyes and picture a car in your mind, you really can't. Because you don't know what type of a car. A car has definite definition for all of us. We know exactly what a car is. We know it has number of wheels, we know it has steering wheel, it has brake, it has gas pedal, a throttle. We have all these, we know it has all these stuff. But we have to go, oh, is it an SUV? Is it a minivan? Is it a sedan? Is it a hatchback? What type of car? I have to keep inheriting forward until to, I get to a definite thing so you can actually picture that car, correct? But the idea of car exists. All cars drive, some of them with gasoline, the other ones with electricity but they still drive. There is no car that cannot drive. That's just a stupid car, <laughs> right? You need a car that drives, right? It's the same thing. So a car needs a drive method, but until you decide if it's a gasoline, diesel, or electric, you cannot implement the drive method in it. Do we understand this? These type of methods are definitely virtual and a special one. These type of methods are virtual, but a special type of virtual. If, for example, I have an animal, and I know for a fact animals can make a sound, but I don't know how. I cannot implement it. It won't be right. I have to implement it to a cat so I know it's a meow. I have to implement it. I have to inherit it to a dog so I know it's woof woof. I have to implement it in a bird. Oh, wait, I can't because there are so many different birds with different types of sounds. So I cannot still do it. But this type of virtual functions are special. When I want to prevent something to get implemented, what do I put in front of it? Equal to delete. When I'm not sure how to implement it, I put equal to zero. I do not know how an animal can make a sound, but I know it has to. I enforce it, otherwise an animal cannot exist. This, which is called a pure virtual function, renders a class abstract. So if you have even one virtual function, pure virtual function inside the class. That class is abstract. You cannot implement it. You cannot instantiate it. It's incomplete. Because it's abstract, it cannot be instantiated. To be able to instantiate an animal, you have to create a cat that has a sound. And it is implemented to say meow. You have to create a dog that says woof woof. You got it? So it's not that you can't call the pure virtual function. You can. And it's actually beautiful. When you look at it, I can actually have an array of animal pointers. An animal by itself, if I uncomment this one, I'm going to get a compiler telling me, hey, your animal has an incomplete function. It has a pure virtual function. It's an abstract base class. You cannot instantiate it. But I can have an animal pointer, several of them, and I can, and I can, and I, yeah, 
and I can create instances of cats and dogs in it and put addresses of dogs in it perfectly. It handles them perfectly because dogs and cats are animals. And then in a loop, I'm going to say animal zero, make a sound. Animal one, make a sound. Animal two, make a sound. The function call is identical. The outcome, absolutely different. Take a look. So dogs and, and, and cats are all created, created Milo the animal, that Milo the dog, uh, Jack the cat, uh, Snowy the dog, and Jill the cat, right? And then I put them all in a loop. One by one, I say, make a sound. When you look at this, you don't even see what type of a thing you are calling. They are just animals to you. But because each object knows what type it is, and the sound making thing is an, a, a pure virtual method or a virtual method, they will be at call everything properly. So different actions, exact same call, call. They are doing the same thing in a different way. And even the signatures are identical. It's not an overloading thingy. There is no different argument types. Identical calls, different outcomes. Perfect example of polymorphism. So the second example you have for polymorphism in this case, the first one that we have, the first type of polymorphism we had that comes from C. You have casting. You can write double A, and they say A is equal to 2. So you set a double to an integer value. Magically happens. That's coercive. Uh, so it's yeah, kind of a fake type of uh, polymorphism. Second was, was overloading. You wrote functions with the same name and different types. That's a fake polymorphism too, because the signature is actually different, right? This is real. Function calls, statements, everything's identical. The outcome based on the type of the object automatically gets called properly. You're saying animal makes a sound, and it sounds uh, exactly how it's supposed to. So, so, <clears throat> so essentially, not only this, I could have done this. I could, I could say over here, uh, uh, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? I'm going to go void. Uh, I'm going to put that tickle thingy over here. No, not tickle. Uh, uh, um, I'm going to call a standalone act function, and in here I'm going to pass an animal reference. So animal reference A, and obviously I'm going to make it a constant. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we'll see. So in here I'm going to say A dot act. Oh, it doesn't accept, which means I did not set the act constant. Did I? No, I'm a bad person. Const. The sound was constant? No. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to make it const. Therefore, the cat has to be const. Oh, my God. So, okay, I'm not going to change it now. <laughs> Please do it yourself. In here, I'm just going to make the act. I'm just going to make the act not constant so I can actually call it. OK, so now if I come over here, I can actually say act. And I'm going to put the reference of PI. And you will see that the outcome is going to be the same. So if I run it, you will see that everything's going to work perfectly as it's supposed to. Oh, errors. What did I do? Mm. Oh, I left the const over there.
What's going on? I changed something and I screwed everything up. Oh, there you go. That's the const over there. What else? One more time. Uh, what does it say? Oh, no, name. What does it say? It says, uh, it says, overload memory is not found in our, what? Oh, did, why did I remove the const of name? I'm a bad person. Did I? Was that the reason? Yeah, I removed the wrong const. Anyways, whoa. Okay, one more time. All right, there we go. So now when I look at it, uh, the actions that are called over here are perfect. So act, act things that are for dogs and cats. So everything is called perfectly as it's supposed to. And uh, again, remember, so... Uh, what do we what do we what do we need to uh, focus now on is that when you create a pure virtual method, the class is doomed to be only a base class. It cannot be used anymore. It is only used for a base of another class. So for example, if I create some kind of an animal that had nothing else, no improvement to an animal, and only implemented sound, then I could instantiate it. Sound making animal, let's call it. You could. It doesn't have to be everything that I did over here. But uh, for a, so what is the opposite of an abstract class, abstract based class? A concrete class. A concrete class is a class that doesn't have a pure virtual method. Okay? And the next day that you're coming in, I'm going to teach you one more thing uh, that is with object orientation that you need to know. That is, uh, in object oriented methodology, they have a special name for an abstract based class that has only pure virtual methods and nothing else. Again, in object-oriented terminology, in C++ it doesn't make any difference. C++, one pure virtual function and that's it. It becomes abstract based class. So they're all the same. But in object-oriented methodology, they call an abstract based class who only has pure virtual methods and nothing else, an interface. So when you are hearing interface, it's an abstract base class that doesn't have any concrete method. All the methods that they have is pure virtual. That's just terminology. Well, I'll, I'll explain in the next one that we are coming. And that's it. So that's uh, two weeks worth of material. So. As I told you, because they, they, they are fit back to back so nicely, I don't need to spend two weeks for it. Two weeks, we're just going to review it, talk about it over and over and over. Okay? But that's what it is. Yes? Six and eight. So say that loud so everybody knows what it is. No, no. Week six and week eight. Eight. Seven is input and output. It comes in here. Can I, can, can I not do input and output? <laughs> oh, yeah. Class, so classes with resources focuses on classes. We are around 20%. I think I sent them. No, I didn't send the message. You'll get an announcement. Around 20% of the marks approximately is on classes with resources, like copy constructor and stuff like that. And the rest is all inheritance. No virtuals. Virtuals, next quiz. All right, are we good? Any questions? Yes. It doesn't prevent. You cannot even create it anymore. If you create a body for it, it gives you an error. So you say virtual, virtual void sound equals to zero. It means you do not implement it. It doesn't have a body, no curly bracket anywhere. Ah, so it's nothing. Nothing, literally. It's just 
an enforcement for anybody who inherits from animal to create a sound. Exactly, the descendants have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we good? Are we okay, one? Are we okay, two? I'm going to shut the, please, when I shut down the computer, don't come and ask me a nice question. Are we good? Yes. Sure, so we, we'll talk about that privately. Uh, it, it, it says in the description, I don't know. No, no, no. So milestone one, two, three, and four. Milestone one, two, three, and four. It has a loose dead end. It has a loose due date, which means it's a recommended due date. And I recommend you, st you stick on it. Stick to it. Stick on it. Stick to it. So what happens is that if you are even one week up to one week late, you get the full mark. It doesn't matter. Okay? But if you go past one, you get zero. But you must submit it. Submissions of one, two, and three, and four is mandatory. Without submitting it, your project is incomplete. So from Sunday until this Sunday is week one, right? I don't know. Sunday. Look at the due date. Look at the due date. I don't Because <laughs> if I say something and it's yeah. not like that, it's because... Okay, so I'm pushing these things, and please make sure you...